Today we're having ourselves a spring day in the garden and I have so been looking forward to this. I'm so thankful we're able to dedicate a nice amount of time to spending time outside today working on different projects that have been on my list. There's something so immensely calming about being in the garden and I feel like it's just always so restorative to my mind and my heart and it's just been such a beautiful practice over the past year and a few months. I'm really grateful for it. But on the agenda for today, we have some vegetables we can harvest. We have a carrot that I think is ready to harvest. Big question mark with that, but we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. In the past, we've had some, we've grown some very quirky but adorable carrots. So we'll see what this one looks like. And then we have lots of peppers, so we can harvest some of those, some jalapenos. And then we have been growing zinnias that are looking absolutely marvelous. I'm really excited to give you a full tour of everything to show you how it's progressed the last couple of months. But I need to research more. Do I want to start cutting the zinnias once they're in bloom and having fresh cut flowers in our home? That's kind of the whole idea of it, but it just seems... It just seems wrong to cut them when they're so beautifully in bloom. So we'll, we'll think on that. And then the big project we have today is we're going to try to make garden stepping stones from scratch. So I bought some cement yesterday. We're going to use a cake pan as a mold. It's more of a complex DIY project that will take multiple days, but we're going to try it out. Originally, my idea was to just hopefully find round cement stepping stones, but I couldn't find them at all in our area. Just They just had the square ones. So we're just going to do it from scratch. We're going to we're going to try at least. So that'll be a fun project. And my idea, my vision for those is to make circular stepping stones and each stepping stone will represent a different phase of the moon. So I just love this idea and think it'll be really, really special. So hopefully we can bring that vision to life, but really looking forward to today. the back door we have this grape leaf plant which it's coming back we have a lot of new growth but this dries out very quickly so I wasn't as committed to watering it at a certain point so it lost a lot of leaves but she's coming back and then we have our mint plant which has been doing amazing having it potted it really really does well in the pot and then it's not spreading taking over any other garden beds so we have a plethora of mint I need to start incorporating it more in our drinks and our food because we have a lot to enjoy I actually should do some dried mint soon and fill up a seasoning jar that's a good idea good way to use some and then over here I want to work on this space a little bit today because we have some pots that really don't have a lot going on so we can clean those out and then we have this ficus that is doing really really well I had this inside originally and it did not like the place I put it in but I moved it outside and it has so much new growth and just pops up leaves left and right I actually would love I kind of love the idea of planting this in the earth as well because I've seen them planted in the earth around my area and they just grow so beautiful and I think the leaves are just absolutely lovely one thing about it though it has all these little bugs all over it 
it doesn't seem to be bothering the plant, but that is an interesting observation. We have this cactus that has some new growth, and then our orange tree, our potted orange tree. I do notice this little baby orange. I don't know if it'll have enough nutrition to continue to grow. I saw some of them fall to the bottom, but that would be very exciting if we got some growth. The top of the orange tree, however, looks a little sad, but I guess it's just prioritizing growth at the bottom, and then hopefully as it ages, it'll just get more lush and full. And then over here, this is an exciting area, of course. I am just absolutely so in love with these zinnias we planted. If you didn't watch our gardening video at the beginning of the spring season, in February actually, we planted these from seed and they are coming into bloom. We still have some that have yet to bloom, but they are just absolutely adorable. I really, really love them. Also, this beautiful plant, I forget what it's called. My Grammy gave it to me for Easter. I need to identify it and then she told me to water it from the bottom, so I need to make sure to do that, but such beautiful bright pink flowers. I really love the blooms. And then our water feature, it's not on right now, it's on a timer, so it goes in and out. I actually wanna clean this out today because it's been about a year since we created this, so it could use a little clean up, clean up the rocks a bit, and just, I could even add some more plants within the water feature, so we'll do that today. And then, let me give you a closer look at the zinnias. We also have some, okay, these are zinnias right here that are continuing to grow. And then we also have various other wildflowers that I planted. I think these might be Cosmos. I'm really not sure. But I used a mix and then I also planted Cosmos seeds specifically. But I just love how the zinnias get so long and whimsical looking. It's just so delightful to look at. So really excited about that. We have more over here. So... A lot is growing in these beds that we sort of just put together. I mean, a few months ago, these beds were just mulch, and now they have these beautiful, beautiful blooms that add so much color and life to the space. So really, really pleased, and I love how the zinnias are so colorful, like, and how they sort of have different colors here and there. That worked out really nicely, because I just, I planted a seed mix so I didn't know what colors they would be but they're all just so dreamy so we have that looking good and then over here our jasmine is still blooming we're a little bit past full bloom but we still have so many beautiful beautiful blooms that smell absolutely heavenly whenever we come in through the garage we just get a huge whiff of the jasmine scent and it's so so beautiful i love clipping these off and putting them around our home as well for bringing that beautiful scent inside so we're really enjoying it and then our lemon tree we have we harvested all of the lemons there's not any left at the moment but we have a lot growing so that is really really exciting here's a look at one right there let's see if i can find some more for you they kind of are camouflaged right now with their green color but they'll start to turn yellow and i actually need to check my calendar because i fertilize the lemon and orange tree every few months and i believe the last time i fertilized was september I think I need to check my calendar because maybe we should fertilize today too but that's great I'm just really encouraged by the growth and then yesterday I went to the garden center and they had some milkweed which I was so excited about because we're growing some more from seed but I you know it takes a bit of time so I was really excited to find some locally grown milkweed in the meantime that the butterflies can lay some eggs on the monarch butterflies but the caterpillars just eat the milkweed so quickly so I don't know I haven't quite decided yet if I want to plant these within the earth or if I want to pot them I'm kind of leaning towards potting them but I might not have enough pots at the moment for all of them so we'll see what we will check our inventory and see what we have because when you plant the milkweed in the earth it looks really beautiful some of the time and it as you can see like some blooms are coming through which is lovely but once the caterpillars make their home on it, oops, it just started to rain somewhere. Do you see that? 
we're getting a little sun shower but once the caterpillars make their home on it it just becomes they become little sticks because they eat every single leaf off so that's something interesting oh this is lovely we have a little rain shower okay and then our bougainvillea if you saw one of the vlogs where I shared how this really lost all of its leaves it was quite concerning I didn't know what was happening but thankfully as you can see it's quite lush and really coming back and recovering so that's encouraging it doesn't have many bracts which is the colorfulness of the bougainvillea so I would love to see more bracts but I don't know if it's because it was recovering or if our soil since it's planted within the earth it might just be too moist of soil because when you research bougainvilleas it's so interesting apparently when they're more colorful it's typically because they get more sun and it is more dried out or in drier soil so that is very fascinating i'm still learning about the bougainvillea but it's continuing to grow along our arch trellis and i just love the lushness it provides so there's that and then over to our garden beds we love our little butterfly bench over here and we have kale still still going strong and i'm ready to redo this side of the bed hi little lizard <laughs> there's lizards all over um this side of the bed has some little lettuce sprouts but they're not really going anywhere and i just feel like we could use it for something else so well i'm still thinking i'm still marinating on that and then we have our beautiful flower bed we have some daisies i love these daisies so much we have lavender and then this beautiful purple flower just popped up and I love it. It is absolutely gorgeous. I don't know the name on it. This is just a wildflower mix as well. So it's a blend, but this one's really, really gorgeous. I've never seen it in the garden before. Then we have some other cute little wildflowers popping up. And this is the milkweed that the caterpillars um, devoured. So as you can see, they're just little sticks at this point. We have a couple leaves on top and we have some baby milkweeds growing down here that we planted, but yeah, I'm definitely excited. I was able to find the milkweed at the garden center yesterday. And then our peppers, we definitely could harvest some peppers today. I also have a lot of, I don't know if these are weeds or if they're baby pepper plants. I need to figure that out. I'm having trouble identifying them. It would make sense that they're baby pepper plants because these flower all the time and sometimes the little peppers don't make it so there's seeds within the bed so I'm not sure but maybe I'll pull some of those out today but we have a lot of peppers we can actually harvest some today too I love how sweet they are um, I could actually this is standing up really nicely now but I might get some more triangular trellises soon just to give it more support but we have a lot of peppers, a lot of beautiful peppers and jalapenos, which we love jalapenos. So I'm so thankful to have these growing strong. So yeah, that's really exciting. I'm thankful about that. We have some beautiful florals over here. We have a carrot I want to harvest today. This one, I think, I mean, it's been growing for a while. I don't expect it to be the biggest carrot, but we just got to get to the bottom of it and see see where it's at. So we have that one, and I'll probably let this one go for a little longer. And then I also planted some Everglades tomatoes, which I'm so excited about. We have some sprouts right here doing their thing. These are too close together. I don't know why I planted them so close. I didn't think I did, but maybe they just all, I don't know. So we'll see how that continues to grow. Our basil, our parsley is looking good. A lot of little baby basil plants. So that's funny, they keep popping up. But there we have it. And then our potting station is looking good that we worked on. This purslane is so fascinating to me. I don't know if I've shared this before, but every night and morning when I come out to the garden, the blooms close up and they kind of go to sleep, if you will. But then once the sun starts shining a bit, they open up and they're so sweet. It's interesting how it does that though. So we have that and then we have this beautiful vining plant. I forget the name of it, but I love the vines it has. And we're also propagating this banana, string of bananas, that's what it's called. So that's a little cutie. And then I also planted this monstera propagation, which 
um, as you can see, the, the one of the leaves is kind of burning off, but it does have a, a new growth, so I don't know, maybe we should move this. I'm not, I don't need it in this spot at all, but I did notice that leaf kind of struggling, so maybe we'll move that later, but everything's looking good. It's such a beautiful and lush time of year. Oh, that is so anticlimactic. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Where even is it? Oh, there's two. That is so funny. Oh my goodness. Well, we have a yellow one and a purple one and they're absolutely tiny and don't look very tasty if we're being honest. Someone did recommend to me putting the carrot tops in soup though, so I kind of want to do that. I made lentil soup yesterday, so maybe I could just garnish it with some carrot toppers. some replanting. I planted some milkweed in the earth and then also kept some in containers. I put another milkweed on this side so hopefully it'll do well there and the butterflies will find it easily. stuck in there. Maybe he'll jump when I go close to him. It's okay, buddy. We'll get you out. Don't worry. Oh, he made this his home. I'm 
elastic um, at the base just to add more height. stays in one shape. That's so interesting. Oh. There we go. It's in better height than we had before because it kind of sank down throughout the past year. for this actually I think I'm, I'm hopeful it'll turn out well so for this DIY we're gonna need concrete yesterday at the hardware store I picked up a 40 pound bag of concrete so that's what we'll use and you'll also need a bucket and this bucket's great because it's okay to get it messy you definitely want one that is meant for projects like this or one you don't care about kind of ruining you know because it'll have concrete in it so we have that and then we'll need water all I need for the to set the concrete is water so we'll mix it in the bucket and then you also are gonna want some sort of like metal wire or chicken wire so I ordered this I, I was at the garden center yesterday too and I saw they had a bunch of like really inexpensive wire so I wish I just got it there but I had already ordered this but essentially, I'm going to, one second, I'm going to cut this and we are going to put that in the middle of our cement just for some extra support so that our stepping stones don't crack. So we'll pour a bit of cement at the bottom and then add this in the middle and then pour more on top. And then I have a shovel to mix it all around. And I'm also going to wear a mask when I'm doing this just so that any of the concrete dust, if it kind of floats up, I'm protected and not inhaling it. So we'll do that. And then we will play around with it once we pour our first batch. But I love the idea of adding different like elements. I like the idea of putting the name of each moon phase which they are kind of long so that makes it trickier but these are small too did I show you the cake pan yet also I, I you also need the cake pan I feel like I didn't say that oh there's this cute butterfly that keeps flying around oh my gosh it's on the zany oh my god oh shoot I scared it I think oh come back come back a happy distraction I lost where I was but these metal letters they I'm interested about putting the phases kind of in an indent of the phases in each stepping stone so we'll try our hand at that and see what we think and I'm also thinking it might be best to let it set for a little bit not completely so it's all dry but a little bit so that it'll be easier to apply the the lettering i don't know that is a uh, to be determined but really excited to give this a shot so i guess we'll just start by mixing the concrete and then go from there
later and we have semi-finished our DIY stepping stone project. Definitely ran into a few curveballs. The biggest issue I had was that I didn't have a wire cutter that would cut through our metal mesh that we got to stabilize the stone. So that was the biggest issue, but I went back to the hardware store today and I got some more mesh and I also got a wire cutter that's sufficient to cut that mesh. So that went a lot smoother and I actually, <laughs> a couple days ago, I tried to make a stepping stone. I was really experimenting and I tried to make one that was a lot thinner than our original one and without the metal mesh and after it dried, <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's test it out. Like barely put any weight on it and it just cracked into a million pieces. So the metal mesh is super important and then it's also helpful to make it thicker. So we learned that and I did run out of uh, cement mix. So I've made four and a half so far and essentially I used 10 pounds of cement per stepping stone. So there's a reference for you. And yeah, just being, just dedicating a lot of time for this project is super helpful because of course it takes time to dry. It's also really great if I'm able to let it dry in the direct sun so that it solidifies and um, firms up more quickly. So that's good to know. And I still plan to make eight, eight stepping stones, but it'll just, I don't want to rush this project. It definitely, like I said, takes more time. So we'll continue working on it, but I wanted to share the details now to set you up for success if this is a project you would like to do. It would also be super fun to make a mosaic or you could even get different kinds of cake pans for molds. You could get a heart shaped one. I'm sure there's a butterfly shaped cake pan. That would be amazing or a sunshine one. You really could get so creative with it, which I love. And I painted the current ones I have with paint I already had. I just wanted to reuse what we already have because we still have about half a pint of this dark blue paint, which is actually called it's so fitting. It's called Dark Night. It's Volsper Dark Night. And we used this for Palmer's uh, little area under the stairs. So it was perfect. We already had that. It is interior paint, so I'm not totally sure how it'll hold up. But that's an easy thing to adjust as time goes on or modify. But I really hope you all enjoyed this video and project. I'll keep you updated as we continue to add different stones. And now that I have a bit more experience in this. I think it'll go a lot smoothly and be a lot more simple next time, but definitely a fun garden project to work on. And we still have so many ideas. So I'm excited to share all the garden ideas. We're slowly but surely turning our backyard into uh, an oasis, basically a fairy dreamland oasis. That's the goal. But again, I hope you all enjoyed this video and I'm excited to see you next.